Hello everyone and welcome to a quick lesson on the Entity Relationship Model or ERD diagrams and we'll be using the Visio 2013 tool from Microsoft to take the concepts and apply them to the real world situation of creating an ERD diagram. So first of all let's take a think about that name. An Entity Relationship Diagram is simply a diagram of various entities the attributes associated with those entities and the relationships among and between the entities. Most ERD diagrams are going to represent entities as rectangles divided into three horizontal parts and I'll get into that later when we actually get ready to start our ERD diagram in Visio 2013. First of all, let's talk about what is an entity. Now an entity is just an object of concern to a database. Uh, this is just a essentially a table if you want to think about it, but we're at the logical design stage. So in reality we shouldn't call it a table, but when we get to our physical design, it will become a table. But an entity is just something we want to talk about that is all alone by itself, such as a customer or an employee or a department. These are all entities. And as I said, we use these in the logical design phase of creating a database. And when we use this entity, when we create this entity, well, we have that specific item in mind. Well, there are characteristics of that, and we call these attributes. An attribute is a quality that describes or defines some aspect of that entity. And it can co correspond to the columns in a table, if you want to think about it that way, that we are going to create, as I said later, in the physical design process. So we have, let's say, an address entity. Well, in that address entity, we might have attributes of or characteristics of an address. And when we think about that, we could say that street name is a attribute or characteristic. The city, the state, the zip code, those are all attributes or characteristics of that entity. So hopefully that's a clear understanding of what an entity and an attribute are. Well now that we have our entities and we have their attributes, well we need more than just one entity for a database, so we are going to create more entities and we need to make sure that the entities relate to one another so that we're not just creating entities that have nothing to do with the overall scope of our database. So we need to create tables or entities that relate to other tables and there are different types of relationships that exist between entities and we'll go over those now. We have three different kinds of relationships and those are one-to-one, one one-to-many, and many-to-many. -many. Let's take a look at what's the one-to-one. -one. As you can see, one instance and one entity, as on the left, is related to, to one instance of the secondary or child table on the right. Now most of the entities in any relational database are going to have a one-to-many relationship. And a one-to-many relationship really means that for each record in the primary entity, like we have on the left, that is going to be related to many instances on the right. You could also say that for each record in the primary entity, there can be many associated records in the secondary or child entity. So we have these relationships. We have parent and child entities, we can use those terms as well. Now an example of a one-to-many relationship could be like a department and employees. We had a department could have zero or more employees and each employee only belongs to one department. So that'd be an example of a one-to-many. Now let's take a look at our many-to-many -many relationships now that we've got an understanding of our one-to-one -one relationship and our one-to-many relationship and I've provided a couple examples of that. So now you can think about many-to-many. -many. Now many-to-many -many relationships are very common and there are legitimate relationships in logical terms but no database can implement them. And a many-to-many -many relationship really means that each record in the primary entity can have many related records in the second entity and each record in the second entity can have many related records in the primary entity quick example of many to many is let's say we have a magazine entity and a subscriber entity. Many magazines can send to many subscribers and many subscribers can subscribe to many magazines. 
So hopefully that helps out. Now how do we physically lay that out in an ERD diagram? Well we are going to talk now about cardinality and crow's foot notation. Cardinality is a term that refers to the number of allowed instances of a relationship. So in the usual cardinality of one to many, for instance, each record on one side can have zero to any number of records on the many side. And it can be more specific. Cardinality could refer to a specific number such as a person at a library could have up to 20 items checked out at one time, or they may have none. All right, now let's take a look at this crow's foot notation to make sense of this. Now crow's feet notation is just a type of notation for entity relationships in an ERD diagram that depicts the many sides of relationship with a three-pronged end called a crow's foot. Now this type of notation provides more information about the cardinality of relationship than the arrow notation for relationships. So if we take a look at these, you can see we have several listed here. We have one, a many, one and only one, zero to one, one or many, and zero or many. And it depends on the type of relationship, how the information relates to each other as to which one you're going to use. And these are called endpoints. So you have your line that's going to go between your entities, and then you're going to have your endpoint. You're going to have your beginning point that starts with your primary, and then or your parent entity, and then an endpoint that connects to the end of relationship, and that will describe the relationship between them. If you have a one to one, let's say, uh, or a one to many, this is how you would denote the one. And your line would just connect them and you would have a notation or endpoint of one on one side and say it's a one to one, you would have a one on the beginning point on the left as well. And if we were going to do any type of other notations, there are some that we can mix together, uh, but you want to create those relationships between your entities to show that relationship, which is why we have our ERD diagram to show that logical representation. If we have many relationships like the ones I described earlier, like one student could take many classes, this is the endpoint we will use for our crow's foot notation in our software or if we're drawing it out, wherever the case may be, and our relationship line between the two. If we had a many to many relationship on our beginning point, we would have a crow's foot on that side. Now if we were going to have a one and only one instance, we would use this one. If zero or many more, or zero or one, we would use that one. One or many, this crow's foot notation, and zero to many would be the one we use there listed on the bottom. So it just depends on how you're doing your relationship. So just think out logically, say them out loud as to, okay, this entity relates to this one based on this type of relationship, and that's how you choose which of these that you feel is necessary for your ERD diagram. I know all that information is great in theory, but it's probably about time that we take this information. We've talked about entities and their attributes and how the, they need to be related in a relational database design. And we've talked about logical design. Well, how about actually putting some of that together and creating some entities? If you take a look here, here's a sample one that we've got here talking about employees as one entity, department as another entity, and employee skill as another. You can see all three parts are in each of these. We have our the name of the entity, we have primary keys and foreign keys delegated here, and we've given our attributes logical names as well. For the most part these will usually transcend into our physical design of our database but here's what that looks like and you see we have relationships in here we've used crow's foot notation so we've taken the theory everything I talked about and we've implemented it into a actual logical design and laid our entities out showed our relationships shown how those can relate to one another and the importance of the attributes to an entity and how your attributes are only specific characteristics of that entity you can see with our employee table here for example we have a primary key of employee code and that is also a primary key uh, for our department as well and that's the relationship between the two and we have other attributes in our employee table such as employee name department code location code and the employee manager and there are other entities that go along with this as well I'm only showing you a few but you can see all of these key characteristics 
are listed here as they should be and we now have the starts of an entity relationship diagram using that crow's foot notation that I talked about earlier. Well how about we take all this information I've shown you here and we've talked about previously and we actually use that with some hands-on demonstration using Microsoft Visio 2013. So let's go ahead and jump over into that now. Now that we know a little bit about ERD diagrams, entities, relationships, attributes, cardinality, crow's foot notation, let's put that into practice using Visio 2013 and creating an ERD diagram. So when we open up our Microsoft Visio, we see that we here through our list we can find crow's foot database notation. You could simply just scroll through or you could type in, but crow's foot notation is one of our featured categories. So we're going to just click on that to be able to work with a crow's foot database notation. Now we see that we can use US metrics or we can use metric units. We're going to use US units for this one. Simply click the create button and Visio will open up and give us all the shapes that we need for creating our crow's foot ERD diagram or ERD diagram using crow's foot notation. And you can see over here we have entities, we have primary key separator, we have attributes, we have primary key attributes, we have relationships, everything we need to do to be able to create our ERD diagram quick and simple. So to get this started let's grab an entity and drag it into our workspace and we'll just drop it there. And now we have our entity and we can zoom in to give us a better look, as you can t tell we're at 44% here. We will scroll in there and you can zoom into whatever you feel comfortable with. Now we can just create our entity name, as I said earlier, and then we can input our attributes. All right, let's call this one Tutor. So we'll just select in there and we will change that to Tutor. And we will have a primary key, we'll just call that Tutor Key. Let's just make that one word and we'll, we'll use camel case notation. And we'll have tutor last name and tutor first name. So go ahead and put those entries in now. And now we have created our first entity with its appropriate attributes. All right, let's say we want to add some more entities or attributes into our entity here. All we do is simply grab the attribute tool here. We drag it over wherever we want to place it. And then we let go and you can see I'm going to add another field here. Let's say we want to be able to contact the tutor. So we'll just call this tutor phone. That way we have the tutor's phone number. Now if we want, we can't have a database with just one table, that would just be silly. So let's create another entity. We simply grab the entity tool, drag it over here, let it go. And let's just call this one the courses that the tutor can help with. So we're going to call this the tutor course. And we'll add a tutor key as our primary key. And that will help us relate the two tables. We will use the same primary key that we used in Tutor. And then we'll have an attribute called course key for the course that they can assist with. And we've got two entities. They each have primary key fields and we've given them some attributes. Now, as I showed you earlier, we can add attributes if we want. Let's say in this tutor course, that's all I want to see. I can take out an attribute just by simply highlighting it, by clicking on it, and then hitting the delete key. Now 
I'd have a clean looking entity. Now it's time for me to create a relationship between these two. So let's go ahead and do our crow's foot notation to show our cardinality. To do our relationship, we'll simply click the relationship tool here. And it'll drag and drop it anywhere in your workspace. And then you can connect this anywhere you like. I like to make my lines a little bit thicker so I can actually see them. So you can right click on that and you can format the shape. Then you can change the width of your line. You see I'll just keep increasing that a little bit. Whatever you're comfortable with, but we want to be able to see what we're working with. And now we can connect and then change our beginning point and our end point. So let's just say I'm going to connect this table here anywhere I would like. I'll connect at the bottom there and I'll connect to the bottom here of my entity. And if I right click on the line, that is how you can change what crow's foot notation you're using. So we can go up here, our begin symbol from our primary entity. Since I have a tutor that can teach many courses or one course, whatever the case may be, it can be a one-to-many relationship, obviously, because we've got one tutor that can be assigned to one or several courses that they can teach. So my begin symbol, I'm going to make this a one and only one for the purposes of this. So I'm going to select one and only one, since we need to memorize that chart I showed you earlier. So it's a one and only one, and we want this to be change to a zero or many. So let's go ahead and take a look at changing that. We'll right click our and change our set our end symbol. And we're going to change this to zero or more. And now you can see my crow's foot notation there. I can also change this. You can see I still have the format shape open. Well maybe I want to be able to see my crow's foot notation points, end points a little bit better. So you can see the begin and end arrow size can be enlarged. So we can go extra large if we want. I can change this one to an extra large as well. Now when I'm actually looking at this, I can tell that my crow's foot notation is a zero to many endpoint. That's pretty much it. Now you can add more entities, you can create more relationships. This is just the quick rundown of how to do that. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed the video and you have a little bit more uh, appreciation and understanding for how to do this. So we've taken a look at an ER diagram, entity relationship diagram. We talked about what entities are, the attributes that are necessary for those entities, how to create relationships using Visio and using crow's foot notation. We went through and did some actual simulation of creating and using the Visio tool for this. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I appreciate you following along, and good luck in your creation of your own entity relationship diagrams.